All right, folks, it looks like we have about 60 people on, so we'll go ahead and get started a minute early. Uh, good morning. My name is Jordan Eller. I am one of the three uh, community services managers here at Alta Regional Center. I also have uh, Michelle uh, Duchenne, who's on this morning. Um, Helen has the day off, and John is at a conference. So I know I'm not John Decker. We're using his login for coffee today, so he'll return next week. Um, so some uh, regional center staff that we have on today, we have Alicia, our um, HCBS specialist. Good morning, Alicia. And Ms. Cindy, client services manager. Good morning, Cindy. We have Dana, also an adult client services manager. We have Ms. Odelia Johns-Harris, community services department. Wyatt Stroman. Good morning, Wyatt, client services manager up in our Rose morning. office. We have Isabella. Good morning, Isabella from community services. We have Shirley. Good morning, Shirley. And we have Ms. Camelia Houston, our Director of Intake and um, Clinical Services. I see that Jason is also on from Community Services. Good morning, Jason and Leah. We have Hewitt on. He's going to be talking with us about some disaster preparedness activities. Uh, we also have Michelle Johnson, our Director of Client Services. we got lots of folks on today. we got Dan Kilmer. I see Veronica Hallgren, Client Services Manager. Christy Schaefer. Good morning, Christy also with Community Services and Scott Barr. See uh, Jan Bonner too from our, our service coordinator population, hi Jan. And Zach, John's executive assistant is on. Good morning, Zach. I see um, Johnny Zhang. Good morning. We also, have, um, we also have Gary from Community Services. I see some additional client services managers on here, Rowena and Laura and Christina. So we got lots of folks on today. Um, I also see Heidi from our Grass Valley office. Heidi, I hope you're safe and all that snow up there. So there's some additional folks on, but we'll go ahead and get started with our agenda today. Um, Alicia, our HCBS specialist, has some exciting updates on, on how we're doing with things. So give you the floor. Hey, I think this will be our last update on compliance because we've reached 100% compliance as of March 7th, 10 days before our final due date. Woo -woo. So... Every single vendor who is currently vendored with us is now HCBS compliant in policy. Fantastic. And so many kudos to Alicia, Michelle's whole team, our community services department, our PAC, our vendor population. We really thank you guys. I know it took a, took a village, right, to get everybody across the finish line. And I really want to commend everybody on their hard work. Um, we're really excited. Um, Alicia, too, really, you know, being at the forefront of that. Thank you so much. Very exciting. Does anybody have any questions for Alicia while she's on regarding HCBS? Okay, okay. Then the next agenda item that we will have today is uh, Michelle's gonna give us some updates on our vendor orientation processes. Hello, um, do you mind if I do the ICF first since I have it pulled up, Jordan? That's perfect, okay. we're flexible. We're, we're, we're drinking coffee, we're flexible. <laughs> right on. So um, we had an ICF forum this week to kind of discuss um, what it looks like for our manage our transition over to the managed care Medi-Cal. Um, and I'm going to share my screen. I also put it in the chat. So during that meeting, we don't have a whole lot of information, um, but John shared some resources with us that I'm going to share for you guys. Give me one second. Jordan, are you seeing my screen? We are. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So um, here's a resource that you guys can access. This is um, a work group that has been pulled together. There's some regional center um, staff on there. There's some also vendors and other providers that are kind of looking at this work group on how this transition will occur. Um, the date originally to have all this transitioned over was June of this year, but it has been pushed back to January of 2024. Um, on this, if you scroll down a little bit, you can, these are our, the work groups. So you can click this right here and register to attend um, the work groups and to observe those. And then below that are all the slides, the presentation slides um, from past meetings that you guys can look at. Um, myself and Odelia and John are all signed up for these meetings. So we're, um, between all of us, we will provide updates as we have them available. Um, and then the next steps we do, we plan on having another meeting in September um, of this year, once we get some further information from DDS and DHCS to, um, you know, what that looks like and as they're kind of lining out what that process will look like. Um, so that is, I have that on there. Do you guys have any questions on that? 
know, it's a real important, you know, important topic for our ICF and SNF clients, right? And our ICF providers. So uh, we'll definitely be, uh, you know, like Michelle said, working closely with folks to advocate to make sure things go smoothly and we get our clients' needs covered. I think the biggest, oh, go ahead. Hi, this is Johnny. Johnny John, one of the associate directors. I wanted to share as relates to ICF. We did learn yesterday from one of our providers, ICF providers, right? So regarding uh, some of our clients that were inadvertently transitioned to Medi-Cal managed care plan that no longer has fee for service, therefore they can't get payment. The provider can't get payment. So I just wanted to pass along some information as it relates to that on how to disenroll from um, the MMC plan to go back to fee for service. Because as you guys know, uh, the transition for ICF funding is not supposed to happen until 2024. So I'm gonna, so essentially the information has been shared with us is that from one of our providers, ICF providers is that if a client is, was transitioned to an MMC plan inadvertently, to disenroll from there, what they need to do is submit a face sheet along with the MC171 to an email MMC uh, DO or MMCD ombuds, ombudsman office at dhcs.ca.gov. I'm going to put that information in the chat. So just for those uh, those ICF providers out there that you're wondering, like how do I go about disenrolling the client so that way we can get them back on fee for service Medi-Cal and then get paid? This is at least from one of our providers. This is what's been sure that has worked. And so um, wanted to share that information. Uh, do you know that as you get any, as you learn or experience anything differently, let us know. I'll put my email in the chat as well too. So that way, um, if anything comes up as it relates to that process, share that feedback because it's going to be helpful for us to get to capture that as well as for us to share that with the department. I'm in a close communication with the department to kind of figure out, you know, what's the actual solution to addressing this. But in the interim, this is what's been uh, shared by one of our providers. Thank you so much, Johnny. Does anybody have questions regarding that now? Don't see anything in the chat. I know we got to talk with our right our provider advisory committee about it yesterday, which was great. Um, okay, well, like Johnny said, right, we're available for support and he's gonna put his contact information in the chat and that email uh, should planning teams need to disenroll from a managed care plan and get them back to fee-for-service uh, Medi-Cal. Okay, so next on our agenda, uh, Ms. Michelle, you want to go over the vendor orientation processes? Yeah, and Jordan, can you put Zach's email in the chat for me, please? Absolutely. So Zach's we here. Zach will do it for us. Huh? Zach, if you could oh, do yeah. that. Exactly. Awesome, thank you. Okay. Um, so we in community services are looking at ways to streamline the vendorization process. Um, we have we are working on kind of streamlining our timeline for our vendorizations. Um, and we have that almost finalized. We also, I know that the PAC is aware of this and they've participated in it. We've also um, transitioned our vendor orientation over to a learning management system on our website that will be a, um, go that'll be rolled out in April. And um, that has cut our vendor orientation from a 16 hour vendor orientation to about a five, five and a half hour vendor orientation. So, um, and it's a little bit, it's five if you're a residential uh, vendor, but it's a little bit less if you're not. But we are looking for other suggestions. Anything that vendors have that you guys um, think would help with streamlining the vendorization process. And we're asking that you email those ideas to Zach. Um, so that John and all the managers can look over that and see what our next steps are as far as streamlining that process for you guys. Thank you, Michelle. I know mm -hmm. all of our community services departments really excited about it. I do think too, our vendors are, are gonna find that it's gonna be much uh, a time-saving measure for them. So we wanna try to get folks vendored as fast as we can, right? And if they have additional questions, um, you know, since we're not presenting it live, we will always be here for support to answer those questions. So super excited for that rollout. Coming to the, the modern modern days of technology, right? That's exciting. Um, all right. So next on the agenda with, with all the crazy weather and stuff that we have going on, I know that Hewitt has sent out some information to clients and families and case management, right, vendors. So we're going to have him share some information regarding disaster preparedness this morning. 
just an announcement for everyone. Uh, we did send a message to all our clients uh, yesterday or Wednesday, uh, just to get prepared. Uh, we have some uh, rain coming in, and there's a lot of it uh, coming this weekend. Uh, we just want to let the clients be have extra planning uh, just to be prepared. Uh, the messaging was just straightforward, quite simple. Um, we just let them know there's some high precipitation coming. Um, there's going to be some flood in areas. Uh, just trying to limit travel as much as possible. You know, to stock up on food, and medications, have their backup batteries charged, uh, all that uh, extra planning uh, for this weekend. Um, looking like it will go through Monday and taper off on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, we're also just recommending people to always stay alert and be informed um, and also just follow any official guidance that come um, their way. Uh, so, yeah, I just want to announce, you know, take ex extra precautions uh, with the upcoming rain that we're getting, you know, just making sure your streets are clear, you know, gutters are clear, things like that, that you can do. Um, but, yeah, other than that, uh, we had various roof collapses as well, um, power outages uh, from the last time also we had, so we're working towards that and pulling through. Uh, but, yeah, again, just take the, take, take the extra steps, uh, stay informed. And um, if you have any questions, you always reach out to me. Thank you. And I know that um, Johnny Zhang, right, our associate director over some of our residential services, and Michelle Johnson and our community service teams, right, we're reaching out to residential service providers that we know that are kind of in some of those flood areas, right, kind of the Wilton Gall, right, those type of areas that did have some pretty intense flooding. So um, don't, you know, as a residential service provider, know that we'll probably be reaching out, just making sure that you guys, you know, are stocked up with supplies and you have a safe, uh, safe evacuation plan uh, should you need to do an emergency relocation of the clients due to the storm or the weather, right? So we will be in contact with those providers. Any questions about Jordan, that? Can we add to that, Jordan? Yes, uh, please do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you're on here as a residential service providers and your ear has been known to be flooded, right? Just uh, we certainly highly encourage you to be proactive and uh, we, we don't want anyone to be in the position where they wait sort of till the last minute to be evacuated and then roads are flooded or closed or in the event there happens to be an emergency at your facility, it's going to be tough for people to get there, right? So uh, be on the alert, uh, make sure that you're monitoring the weather. If it happens to be where you, your ear is going to be uh, given a warning, I think it's going to be uh, proactive to then take those steps to relocate it as necessary, obviously, so that way you're not waiting until the last minute, because uh, as uh, Hugh had mentioned, I mean, this is going to be going throughout the weekend, so let's uh, let's be uh, vigilant and uh, take the um, proactive approach and to ensure that everyone's safe. And I see, uh, Shirley, did you, did you have a, I you see your hand up there. Yes, hi, good morning. Um, I just wanted to comment, I've already had several programs reach out as to state of emergency and state of emergency billing. Um, the governor did announce uh, additional counties yesterday. I have not seen it in writing from the governor's, um, excuse me, from DDS yet as to additional state of emergency billing, but we will certainly be on top of that and we'll, um, answer all of you uh, the questions that you're asking about the state of emergency billing. Apparently some, we've mm -hmm. had some uh, transportation vendors who've canceled services and that kind of thing. And, you know, there's always that concern about flooding, especially right now in Elk Grove, Galt, that area, Wilton. So um, as we know more, we'll make sure that we'll let you all know. Thanks. So much, Shirley. Mm-hmm. Any questions regarding that or kind of disaster preparedness? I know some people are looking for sandbags and things. I think they a lot of the news stations will post where you can get that. Um, do we have any of that information on our website, um, Hewitt? Or are there good websites for yeah. sandbags? Okay. Yeah, I'll get that on there. Um, okay. I'll have that posted today. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, all right. The next on the agenda, we um, Carly is going to give um, our employment specialist. Carly is going to give some updates on some of the DSP workforce activities and upcoming events. Hi, everyone. So um, I know a couple of weeks ago I had mentioned the upcoming um, career expo um, we have um, that we're planning with the ACRC and BMRC collaborative event. So. 
Um, this is the flyer that I, I do believe it has been approved now and should be going out soon. Um, the Career Expo will take place on May 3rd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at uh, this address on Lemon Hill Avenue. Um, you, you will be able to click here just to register. Um, we have plenty of space. Um, it is a huge location. Um, so this is the one that is going out for um, the employers, and this is the copy that will be go will be going out for um, job seekers. Um, so these should be going out um, anytime now. And then additionally, on March 22nd, we are having an another event here at uh, the Regional Center on Harvard Street to showcase um, kind of just what our collaborative event or our collaborative um, project is. We're going to be discussing how it got started, um, what the purpose is. We are hoping that our website will be up and running by then and we can show everybody um, what our website is. Uh, we're very excited about it. Um, I believe I've talked a bit about it before, but for those um, who don't know, um, we're kind of, uh, working it off of a website, uh, DSP Ohio, um, that it's it's essentially a one-stop shop for DSPs to go find employment and for um, disability service providers to find job seekers interested specifically in um, DSP positions. Um, it's very cool. If you wanna go check out the DSP Ohio website, I can put that in the chat just so you can kind of get, get an idea of what we're going to be doing. But um, we sh we're hoping that it will be um, ready for us to show everyone at this event. We will also be showing a, uh, the documentary Invaluable, The Unrecognized Profession of Direct Support. There will be one here. Uh, the Regional Center on March 22nd from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Um, there will also be one at Valley Mountain Regional Center. So um, this will also be going out soon for you to register. Thank you so much, Carly. And I did see a question in the chat pop up here. Let me get to that. And I think it was about, um, hi, David, I know that you have a question. So is this flyer currently on our Alta Regional Center website, Carly? Because he's wondering um, how he can get a copy of it. Um, it will be. I believe it was just approved. Um, I I think um, John and Lori wanted okay. to add something to it, okay. um, but it should, it'll be um, sent out both to our providers and just the community in general very shortly. Okay. And um, so... Uh, you can definitely get on our, um, David, um, I, are you signed up, everybody? I encourage you, if you're not signed up to get Alta announcements, right, you can get on the Alta Regional Center website mm -hmm. and you can sign up to get whether or not, right, you're a vendor or just a, a, a you know, a community stakeholder, right? Um, we definitely want to share those resources and it'd be great, you know, to get yourself signed up if you're not or not already. Perfect. And I've also put the DSP Ohio site in the chat for anyone who wants to go explore just to see what um, we're looking at doing. Thank you so much. Any questions about that or any, any additional information PAC members might want to share? It is very exciting to see all this getting rolled out, right? We all know that the DSP workforce is, has been a, a huge, huge need for probably decades. So, uh, right. So really glad to see that there's a lot of momentum and energy around that. I'll pop in. Um, maybe sure. maybe Michelle uh, uh, might have a comment or two. Um, if you're a provider and you haven't uh, and you haven't heard of this before, please come to one of the March events first. Learn more about it. You can hear, as Carly said, about the background, everything that we've been doing as a collaborative, both providers um, along with both of the regional centers, um, and that'll give you more background, hopefully more buy-in for putting your information on the site that's going to be released. Um, and, uh, and then of course, uh, uh, being one of the providers at the, uh, the May event for hiring. So the initial one is just info. We want your buy-in, we want your, your involvement. And then the next one is, is the hiring one. Any questions around that? All right. I don't see anything in the chat. 
All right, cool. Moving on to our next agenda item. I know that um, last week, John had announced to Coffee with Community Services that Sacramento County, right, had reached out at, with resources for COVID testing kits. So um, I know that uh, we did not have the bandwidth within our, our community services department to really spearhead a distribution of that number, like, you know, thousands of COVID tests. So it's my understanding um, that three vendors have volunteered to help with that distribution. Um, it looks like Elk Grove Adult Community Training, Let's Go Transportation, and Futures Explored. Um, I do believe that it's still in the, the kind of the planning stages of that, with you, if you will. So um, I don't know if any of those vendors are on this morning. If so, you're welcome to, to chat with folks. But otherwise, just know that, you know, at Coffee Next Week, we'll be able to provide some additional information on how that uh, distribution project is uh, progressing. Okay. I'll, um, <clears throat> Jordan, I'll speak a little bit. Hi, okay. Features Explored. Um, we have a form um, that we're going to have people fill out. Um, I will go ahead and drop it in the chat now, but like Jordan said, so go ahead and make requests. But like Jordan said, it's still like in the infancy, like we don't have the tests yet, but we could start getting your requests and sort of organizing um, requests right now. <clears throat> Perfect. Thank you so much. Perfect. All right. Any questions about COVID tests? All right. Moving right along there. We just have a couple more agenda items, so we'll probably get you out of here a little bit early. Um, we, uh, Helen Neary, like I mentioned, is um, she is off today, but we did get updates from DDS that three of the vendors that had applied for the social rec grants, their um, proposals have been approved. So we are still waiting to hear back on the rest of the, the individuals who applied for that grant. The, th um, the three vendors were notified by Helen yesterday evening with their, with their information and their award letter. So um, next week, Helen will be back on and we can definitely provide more updates, but did just want to let folks know that we're we're starting to see some progress, right? Three out of, I believe it was 11 people who had applied, if I'm correct. So um, any questions surrounding social rec? If so, I'll do my best to answer them without Helen. Cool. All right. Well, we'll chat more about that. Um, and then also, uh, just for folks to know, right, I know that I have mentioned a couple of times that this is the time of year where we're we're completing our uh, community resource development plan, right? DDS has approved two projects for the regional center this year, um, a forensic adult residential facility uh, focusing on substance use disorders and recovery support for our clients who have, uh, you know, dual diagnosis needs and that are also involved in the criminal justice system. And then we also have the ASL interpreting and signing staff pilot program that we have launched. So we successfully held our um, RFP this Tuesday. Um, we had about 30 participants total. It was hybrid. So anyone who's interested in applying for those projects had to attend the, the meeting and will be turning in their proposal by uh, March 29th at 3 p.m. So if anybody has specific questions about the RFP process, um, just reach out to me and I can answer any of those questions. Does anybody have questions this morning while we're on? Okay, cool. And then, um, and then is uh, Miss, Miss uh, Michelle Johnson, right? She has a quick announcement regarding our POS disparity meeting. Yes, good morning, everybody. Wanted to just announce our annual purchase of service disparity meeting. This is an annual meeting that we do. Um, it is March 21st from 5 to 7 p.m. And then we have a second meeting on March 27th from 2 to 3.30. Um, we have the flyer on our website. It is available in multiple languages. Um, we're going to be doing a quick social rec presentation on March 27th, as well as um, um, coordinated family support presentation at the end. Um, so I'll drop the link in the chat. So just wanted to, um, again, announce that we this meeting is coming up and encourage everyone to register. Thanks. Excellent, excellent. 
And then Zach, do you mind um, finding the link to where that is on our website and dropping that in? They're available. Thank you so much. Um, and then, you know, we just have a, a couple other updates, right? Let you guys know about some vendor forums that will be coming up in the month of March. Um, we have the residential vendor forum, right, which will be uh, on Zoom. And that is uh, March 16th next week from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And that will be uh, Michelle and her residential team, um, Isabella, Denise, Odelia, right? And I believe that um, Jason also is, is on some of that. Um, we also have the early intervention is going to be March 21st from 1 to 2.30. And the infant development programs uh, vendor forum is going to be March 14th from 1 to 2.30. So um, at this time, does anybody have any questions about vendor forums or any other agenda items that they would like to discuss with, uh, with our team today? All right. Well, that's those are the agenda items that we had today. Um, I do hope you guys all have a very safe weekend. I know the storm is out there, right? So like Hewitt said, we all have to keep ourselves safe and our clients. So um, I hope you guys all have a very nice weekend. Um, oh, I just saw a question. Are these dates on the website for the vendor forums, Mary? Yes. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not sure if they're on the website. Um, Zach, do you know if we keep a list of vendor forums on our website or any of my community services crew? Do, do we do that? I don't think so, but I can put those. I'll put those dates here in the chat before I, before we end this meeting so that you can at least you can at least have those. So I'll enter those now. And then I can also consult. Um, I can consult with John Decker to see about if that's something we want to start posting for folks. So I'll get this. Uh, get this in here in just a moment. Um, but for anybody else, if you have any questions, um, you know, now's the time. But if not, I hope you guys all have a really nice weekend. And uh, we'll be back next Friday for Coffee with Community Services with John Decker. And like I said, I'm going to give myself a moment here to get this stuff entered in for Mary. Hi, guys. Thank you, Jordan. I'll stay on for about two more minutes in case folks want to write down those dates. 